Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Um, make sure you take this time uh, to just let positive female role models in your life uh, just know how much you appreciate them um, and how much you mean to them, how much they mean to you and just the impact that they've made on your life just let them know because uh, this this is the time for that right it's not just physical blood relatives it means not just your mother but you know your spiritual mother right? your mother in Christ right? And so um, make sure you just reach out to that person today, whether it's a text, whether it's a card, or whatever you want to do with it, that's up to you. Um, but a couple of announcements. Uh, once again, guys, I just want to apologize. I, I really have been trying to um, figure out a way for game night to work, uh, but it's glitchy and it's error prone, and I can't really um, figure out any new stuff with it yet. So uh, for now, we're just going to consider it on hiatus. And then as soon as I get something figured out, uh, we'll bring it back online, all right? Um, just keep, uh, I'm just gonna keep announcing it, but Falls Creek um, has now been reduced to July 8th through 11th. July 8th through 11th is absolutely correct. Um, and uh, Super Summer, unfortunately, uh, the on-campus has been canceled, but they are doing what they call Super Sundays um, every week in, July, uh, in June. And so uh, what we'll do is we'll meet together. Um, if, you, um, if you were planning on going to Super Summer, I really do recommend that you come together. And if it's not something you thought about, uh, but you're interested in, I still want to recommend you come to that. Uh, we'll meet, I'll figure out a meeting location depending on, um, you know, what the state government decides us, decides that we do. Um, but yeah, that'll be, that'll be our, our super summer for this year, unfortunately. Uh, summer schedule is still kind of tentative depending on, um, you know, if things are going to be open uh, in the summer. So uh, keep, a, keep a lookout on that and I'll keep you guys updated. Oh, Falls Creek again, sorry. Uh, $80 a person, if you invite a friend, $5 off, as always. Um, and I think that should be it for announcements. All right, just keep uh, keep tuning in on Wednesdays and Sundays, and, uh, and let's get right into the message for today, yeah? So before we start today, I want to do a fun little activity with you guys. So let's imagine real quick that uh, we're all on this this nice uh, church yacht, all right? And we're sailing off to, to somewhere awesome, like the Bahamas or like, I don't know, Puerto Rico or something, right? Somewhere cool. Um, and along the way, we get like shipwrecked, okay? So uh, the, the boat's turning and, and flopping over and we're getting tossed around. And we, uh, when we wake up, you, we, we see ourselves on a deserted island, all right? So like, there's nothing around us, no other people, uh, no cell phone reception, no electricity, just us, some vegetation maybe, um, and that's it. So if, if the on there's only one thing uh, that survived that we managed to get a hold of before that boat uh, completely crashed, Right, what's that one thing that you would have grabbed? Now remember, cell phones don't work, no electricity. So what is the one thing that you think you should have grabbed uh, when you knew your life was, uh, was about to end? So I'll give you a few seconds to think about it real quick, okay? So now that you've thought about it, hopefully, um, before, I want you to, uh, before I want you to answer that, try to think about these questions, all right? So like, what are we gonna eat? Where are we gonna get fresh water? Um, are there any wildlife on, uh, on, this, uh, on this island that we have to worry about, right? Once you start realizing uh, the, the necessity, right, the importance of, of food and, and water and shelter, you're, you're gonna start wanting these things a lot more urgently than anything else, right? Like, you're not gonna be worried about, um, you know, uh, Twitter or Instagram or video games or homework or anything else that you might find important in your life at this moment if you realize that there's an immediate demand for food and water, right? And so with that in mind, I want to kind of direct you guys into today's topic, okay? So today we're going to talk about David. Uh, David wasn't stranded on a desert island like our, um, like our little activity, right? Um, he wasn't 
on a, on a rock in the middle of the water that he couldn't get to or anything, but rather um, it's a circumstance that was the same, right? Um, he wasn't around any family. He had, uh, he was always worried about what he was gonna eat, what he was gonna wear, uh, not wear, what he was gonna drink, sorry. And um, all these things that we take for granted, David had to fight for uh, when he was on the run from Saul. And so maybe it wasn't his situation, but rather his condition um, that was really closely related to that desert island that we were talking about. So today's passage is going to be in Psalm 63, uh, verse 1. I always want to encourage you guys to have your Bibles out, so I'll give you a few seconds to get that out real quick. And um, when you're ready, unpause the video and let's get started, right? So the passage goes like this, O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So to be earnestly seeking something uh, means that you're, you're passionately striving for it, right? Like that is, that is your main focus, that is the one thing that you want to find, that you want to accomplish. And, and so when you seek that earnestly, uh, everything else kind of fades out of you. Right? And so David wasn't just casually seeking God. He wasn't just saying, all right, God, um, once I get my food and, and my water and my shelter all set up, uh, I'm going to make sure I have some time for you later on before I go to bed. David was saying, God, you are everything. And so before all my needs, before everything else that, I'm, uh, that I could possibly want or, or even need uh, to survive, you take priority. And that's what David was saying. And so David goes so far as to even say that his soul thirsts for God. He could have said, my soul wants you, my soul would like to have you. But no, he said, my soul thirsts for you. And so for David, his relationship with God, uh, with God uh, was as important to him as drinking water was for survival, right? Because when you're thirsty or hungry, that's the only thing that comes to mind, right? Like when you're, and I, and I mean like desperately hungry, desperately thirsty, like, you know, you just ran a marathon or you ran, or, you know, uh, you were fighting against, fighting for your life or uh, something that just forced you to the edge um, of your survival, right? Maybe you haven't eaten in like two days and there's nothing else that's going to matter more than getting that, getting that food in your stomach or getting that glass of water. And that's the way it was for David. And not just that, but he said that he thirsts for him like he was in a dry and weary land, right? So if you're in a nice temperate climate, um, as opposed to maybe, I don't know, like the Sahara Desert, you're going to need water differently, right? So the, the need for water, it becomes even more depending on the, the situation that you're in, the circumstance, uh, the place that you're in. And for David, that was the case with God. He needed him, uh, he needed God as much as he needed water if he was barely surviving in the desert. And so another psalm that was written that kind of exemplifies this is Psalm 42 uh, verses 1 and 2. And so this is how it goes, okay? As a deer pants for flowing streams, so, my, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? And so David's longing for God wasn't just this one-time thing. It wasn't just because he was struggling for that moment in time. It's, it's his entire journey. David is longing for God. He is thirsting for God um, the entire way, nonstop, 24-7. And so Psalm 63 um, was more of like that desperation, right? You could feel it in the words that he chose. David, because of his circumstances, because uh, he was fighting for his life, he was fleeing for his life, um, you could tell that there's that need for God, that urgency for God uh, that normally we wouldn't feel. And so today's first discussion question for you guys is, uh, is this one. Does your desire for God's presence in your life shift with life circumstances? If it does, explain why you think that's the case. If you feel like you need God differently um, when times are good as opposed to when times are bad, why do you think that is? Why do you think we instinctively cry out to Him uh, more longingly, more desperately uh, when our times are desperate? And if we 
move further into the Bible,、um, in the book of John, we see Jesus、uh, saying that He is the, the living water, right? He is the bread of life, and so whoever drinks. From、uh, the living water shall never go thirsty again. Whoever eats of the bread of life shall not hunger again. And so Jesus said these things because it it satisfies、uh, our very base desires, right? Like our our most fundamental down to earth desires.、Um, Jesus is saying that he's not gonna he's not gonna give us actual. Water, and we're never gonna actually physically be thirsty, and in the same, we're never gonna not be hungry again. But he's talking about a spiritual longing. He's talking about a spiritual hunger. And so the reason that David felt that need for God's presence, like、uh, like thirst, was because. Back then, we weren't able to have that relationship with God that we can enjoy now, that we have the privilege of of having now. Where we have that intimate one-on-one relationship with God, and so Jesus did exactly what He promised us to,、uh, that He would do by fulfilling us spiritually. But it's not a one-and-done thing. It's not one of those situations where, okay, I drank the water and I ate the bread, so I'm never going to go hungry and I'm never going to go thirsty again.、Um, that is the case, but it's not as easy as it sounds. Not as simple as it looks, because discipleship is a journey. Right? David never reaches the actual finish line、um, where he f- feels content with his relationship with God、um, during his time on Earth. And in the same way, we're never going to experience that. We're never going to say, "All right, God, this is this is enough. I am fully content on Your love, on Your peace, on Your mercy, on Your power, on Your authority, on Your kindness, and all the great things that come、uh, with our relationship with God." There's no way that we would ever be satisfied until we actually see Him again in person in heaven. And so our discipleship doesn't have a finish line. It has checkpoints. It might have rest stops, but it never has that finish line. And so, if Jesus is the the living water and and the bread of life、um, that leads us to life, then there's something that leads us to death, right? And that's sin. And so, with Jesus, we have freedom from that sin. But that doesn't mean that our journey with Him is over once we receive that freedom, because we sometimes don't treat our relationship with Jesus、um, as the the necessity that it is. See, we don't treat it as as the living water, as as much as we need water and food in our lives. And a reason might be because you're filling up on something else.、Right? You might be filling up on that salt water, known as sin, known as the world. Known as fleshly desires, because if you ever drink salt water, the only thing that it does is it feels good. It feels like it's quenching your thirst for a second, and then it leaves you thirstier than you were before. And so, if there is the the bread of life and the living water that is Jesus,、um, then the other side of that is is what we call、um, the things that lead to death, right? Sin. And so, in Christ, we have salvation. We have freedom from sin. But sometimes we don't treat that relationship with Jesus as the the vital, the important, life-saving、uh, thing that it is, and we neglect the most important part of our relationship with God, which is the relationship. And so, our second discussion question, and this isn't honestly even a discussion question because you don't have to discuss it. It's something that I want you to reflect on, and is it's that. Have you been treating Jesus? Have you been treating your relationship with Jesus、uh, not as importantly as you should have? Have you been prioritizing it like you would prioritize a meal and how you would pr- prioritize water, especially if we're in a in a desert in our lives?、Um, a little imagery to kind of help you understand that is like imagine you're at like this. A super awesome buffet, all right, and you've got like rows and rows and rows and rows of food that's lying ahead of you.、Um, all things that are awesome, all things that are super delicious that you love, and yet you stick 
with water and crackers. Could you imagine how wasteful that is? Like if someone paid a, a ton of money, right, to get you into that super nice buffet and you just go over there and, and you start nibbling on some crackers and, and you just drink a, and you sip some water every now and then and you fill yourself up on that. Imagine if you paid for that person, right? And that's sometimes how we treat our relationship with God, right? We get to the very, very starting line. We get to the, we experience just that tiny little morsel uh, of everything that he has to offer. And we say, you know what, that's enough because after that I get a little uncomfortable. Because I want to save my appetite uh, for some other things that I might have to, right? I want to save that hunger, I want to save that thirst for things of the world, for things that, uh, that don't fill me up, right? So think about how you're treating that relationship with God. Think about how you're prioritizing it. Anyways, uh, that's all I have for you guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I know it's been a long, long uh, couple of weeks and um, We'll, be, we'll meet back soon enough. Uh, but until then, stay strong, stay in the faith. Right? Love you guys.